Hi everyone, it's Daniela and welcome back to my channel. Today I am finally doing the mini album tutorial I have been promising everyone and as I got everything together because this video was supposed to be earlier this month and it didn't work out. It's using Christmas paper but of course everything I show you and everything I do you can change, do whatever it is you like. I've already got everything ready with the Christmas paper so I'm going to follow through with it and not for anything. Sometimes you have to wait for your pictures to come and stuff so it could work for someone. Just saying. Um, and like I always try to remember to say this is how I do things. I am not the owner of these ideas. I didn't discover them, you know, and th this is just how I do it. And if you know a better way or enjoy watching another of the million videos about making a mini album, please feel free to do so. Um, although I do enjoy listening to your comments about, oh, I usually go do this or that. I love it. I just don't want people saying, oh, you know, someone else does it like this. That's awesome, but we're all about positivity and fun and sharing and learning and being awesome here. So let's have fun. We are going to be making a six by six mini album. And six by six means that the pages are going to be like six by six. The covers are six and a half by six and a half. And, um, We'll get to the pages next. So some of the supplies you may need, or I use this paper punch a bunch here. It's like doily or something by Martha Stewart, and I love it. And oh, forgot that too. Um, fixing things. Er, don't want to start over. Okay, we'll need score tape. This is a half, this is three eighths, this is a quarter. Three eighths is the one I use the most for pages and things. When you make half inch score lines, I don't know, half inch tape ends up being too big and three eighths is perfect, but half is great for covers or bigger things and a quarter. Sometimes you just need a little bit, so I'll be using that and art glitter glue. We will need magnets. I am a huge magnet user and um, I did do one page with, well I'm going to do one page with seam binding so sometimes ribbons can be used instead or don't use anything you know it's up to you. Um, I always use a knife to remove the backing off my tape, moan folder, Scoring tool if you don't want to use your bone folder, pencil, and you know I use 15 different scissors when doing stuff, so these are just a few of them. These I use for fabric, these I use for sticky stuff. Nope, these are my good scissors I don't use for sticky stuff. These I use for sticky stuff. Um, you'll need a scoreboard. A uh, paper trimmer, and obviously paper, and a cereal box. So let's move everybody back out of the way and start with the cereal box. So I cut my box all up, but I just want to show you When you get a cereal box, if you haven't noticed, this might seem silly to be telling some of you, but can you see in there that little piece there? See, you just open it up from there so that you don't mess up the box, which I feel like I'm somewhat doing, but see what I mean? So you can open it up there. This is not the one we're using because I already cut it up. I also did a lot of things in advance to save time. I didn't want to 
you know, and there's only so many times you need to see somebody add glue, for example. So when you're done cutting up your box, this box is, like I said, measure to make sure. This box is just about six and a half. When you fold it over, it is exactly six and a half. And tall, it is also exactly six and a half. Now, that's the point. And the spine, this is a big spine. All of them have different sizes of spine. This is about uh, two and seven eighths. And I like having a big spine because it leaves lots of good room in the inside. And then look what you're left with on the bottom. I'm going to use this for another book. Here it is. Well, I cut that off. It would be seven and a half by five and a half. So that is going to be used for another book. All of these little pieces I don't end up using. So, but also I like to upcycle and you know, using a cereal box is a great way to do that. I've used chipboard. I still use chipboard sometimes, but by the time you use this, the cardboard, and add as many layers of paper to the covers as I do, the thickness is the same. And the reason that I love using the cardboard has nothing to do with, not, not, it's not only to do with upcycling, it's because it comes with a attached spine and when you don't cut it that makes it strong a patent piece like this will be much stronger than using three separate pieces and having a space in between which you need people use Tyvek book binding tape and all of that and that's terrific like I said this is how I do it and I find that it keeps it really nice and really strong the only thing that is sort of cool that I've done in the past with some of these pieces is like look it's like a tab so you know you can use them for tabs because that's fun got a tab in the middle there and here they're fun to add to the edge of the book and if I'm sewing a book like a journal which I will eventually show you, I suppose, since everybody seems to want to know all of this. I'm excited to share it with you. I sew into a fake spine, which would be this, and then I would glue this into the spine of the book so that this way the stitches aren't showing on the outside because I'm kooky. So the first thing we're going to do is get our paper, and I have... This is the paper that we're using. It's from this little pad from Craft Factory, and it's all these cute Christmas patterns. And as I said, I have all the pages ready to go, but I did not use, um, I have this much left. I did not add paper to the backs of the flaps and things until I'm done with the cover. And I'm also using craft card stock because it's hard to see on black. It's hard to see on white. And I, I tried all of them to see which one you would see better. And I think craft is the best choice. We'll see. I don't know. We also keep every single scrap to reuse. And I'll show you that after. So we're going to wrap this cover in craft cardstock and this cardstock I it's if you use 110 pound it's too thick and it'll crack if you use 65 you can but I like something stronger and then I get confused <laughs> is it 85 or 90 I don't know the middle cardstock is the one that I really like I pulled out these pages for our covers music pages Merry Christmas page striped and then there are cards that came with this too so if I run out of paper I have cards I can use 
And then this is matte mirror cardstock. I know it looks mirror there, but it isn't, sorry. Um, and I just love how this looks with this paper collection. And I also have glitter paper. Glitter paper is really thick. So all of these are going to be used. Pop them over there. And we'll need a bunch of cardstock anyway. So what we're going to start with is two pieces of medium weight cardstock. And what I do is I'm going to tape glue, tape them together in the middle with a half an inch, a half inch score tape. Trying to pull it back out now that I popped it back in the little place it goes. Here it is. And I just add it down one side and then I add it add the other paper to it. I we need more than one piece of cardstock to cover our book. But the problem is trying not to get my head in here. No. <laughs> and the problem is that you don't want I don't want my seams to be on the page or in the middle of the cover. So I like to put this part here. I like to attach it in the center so that it will go in the center of my um, spine. Forgot the word spine. And give it a good press down. Then we pull out the knife. Nobody freak out. I always use a knife. This is how I roll. I don't know. I tried the paper piercer and some people use a hook and I don't use the hook. Oh, and if I didn't say, I think I did, you know, scoreboard and a, um, uh, paper trimmer. <laughs> okay, so now what you do is you look. I'm going to go from the bottom because I can see better at the bottom. Let's move everybody up. Tape. Put this piece right on top of the tape. Very nice. And then just follow your tape line all the way down. Staying on the tape and then press. Lovely. So what do we do now? Okay. So this guy is going to go right here in the middle. As you can see, we have too much on the edge. You want to have like an inch to cover. That's why we can use eight and a half by 11 because this is six and a half by six and a half and it will give us one inch on either side. If it's a bigger book, then you can go down the long side or use 12 by 12. So we are going to put this here in the center and it's good, but I need to figure out with my pencil where to cut this paper. And if that's there, then this is about an inch. And over here, we're about there. This is about an inch. I'm just looking at my um, mat here. Now I'm going to take this over to my paper trimmer. No, I guess I could bring it the paper trimmer to you. I like to use, I have a huge Viscars double, double, what is the word? Double metal, huge, big Viscars trimmer. But for small things, it's kind of a pain. So I'm just going to pop this in the paper trimmer. I don't know if you can see that I'm on the pencil line. Oh my gosh, this is such a pain. Move. 
I like to keep it alongside of me. I actually lay it on top of my garbage can. <laughs> Use that as a table. All right. Keep all your scraps. Look, this is a great tag or something. Never waste. You know, that's another thing. I can't waste anything. It's like I'm just not capable of doing it. I can't. I don't want to waste. Okay, line this guy up here. Mm -hmm. And if it isn't perfect or whatever, it's okay. Because all of this is going to be covered. So, move the trimmer. Back to the garbage can. <laughs> and our paper. Okay, so got this right we're all good about in the middle mm -hmm. and then I like to just give myself a slight guideline as best as I can not perfect just a little I like to go like this And then like this. And then like this. I know that during this part, I can't possibly be in frame the whole time. I also don't want to be 800 miles away from you. So now what I do is I add score tape all over this. Now. I will probably maybe I'll fast forward I don't know but you certainly don't want to watch me in slow motion add score tape to this entire box it would be very boring but I'll show you a little and then I will fast forward because it'll be boring and I would not want that so I go all the way around the outsides and then I put some in the middle as well. I try not to put any on the bend, the bendy part. I put it in the middle of it. So I'm going to keep doing this and I will fast forward it and I will see you live or not live. I'll talk again when I'm done. Okay, so all the tape is on, as you saw, or I don't know, fast forward all that action, and we are going to now press our tape down, it makes it, the backing come off easier, and I prefer tape on the cover. But uh, when it comes to the papers, some of them I like with glue. And when it comes to adding flaps and pockets and stuff, I like tape. And when it comes to adding the paper, I like glue. So we just go back and forth and back and forth. So what I like to do is take the backing off of one of the covers and then line it up in those little guides I made for myself in the first place. Like I told you, 
I like to use, I should have done this side first, I use this knife for tape. I wrote tape on it because it's gunky and stuff and then it doesn't work as good when it comes, if you want to use it for, you know, I don't know, whatever you would need a knife for. So, um, now I know because I have another one in there if I need to cut or something and that one doesn't say anything on it so yes I label my tools I have separate scissors for certain things I'm a little bit weird but that's just how I roll what do you want me to say so now let's line this up Move that guy. Okay, one corner and press that little bit. And press it down. I like to take a brayer. really 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 press it down okay now I like to spin it go like this take off the middle tape because now everything just lays flat all the way across I'm like the one piece is already in or in in the guides, so everything just falls from there. Just how it goes. Does it always work out perfect? Of course not. But it's the worst that happens. You mess something up and you just do it again. I mean nobody wants to do that, but if that is the worst that can happen. It's not the worst. Not the worst. I think they say it could be worse, right? And those two guys fit perfect in my guides. So we're doing awesome. Okay. One more. One more thing, section, area, something. <laughs> Side, cover, mm -hmm. thing. Come on there, tape. Let's move it. Move it, move it, move it. Because we're going to be pulling out more tape again in a minute so that we can attach this paper and wrap it all the way around our cover. And I like this because like it's always closed. I used to leave sharp knives open on the desk all the time. All right. And there we go right in the guidelines. Yay! Whoops! Magnets attaching to brayers. <laughs> Stand them over there. Okay. Brayer it down. Awesome. So, now I, you can just take it from here and work the paper and pull it and all of that. I need more structure than that. So I will put this on my scoreboard. I will not do that today because it, it's a big pain and it's really not a pain to me, but it won't be very easy to explain and 
show and it'll be that kind of a pain. So the other way to do it is take a mat. You don't even need a mat. And this is a hard mat, but I thought it would be softer than the alternative, which is glass from my other mat. And you put this exactly at the end of your cover. Take whatever you're using to score with and give it an awesome score all the way down, all the way down. Now you've got a nice beginning of your trying to show you zooming in so hard to see if you can see the score line. You might as well like that. A little bit more. And we're gonna do this to all four sides. Like I said, this is the way I do it. If you've done this before and you have a better way, go crazy. I want you to do what makes you happy. I'm just showing you the way I do it. Is it the right way? Probably not. Is it the wrong way? I don't know about that. Is there any wrong way, really? Whatever works for you. I just don't like pulling the paper without having it have a little bit of training while it's flat. I find that, I don't know, maybe I'm too impatient, maybe it's the way I'm doing it. I, I can't say, but I do find that if I don't do this, I feel like it cracks more. Just what I think. I don't know. So. Now we'll go up here for this side and make sure I didn't already do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oop. I mean, the cardboard is already raised so it's kind of easy to run your scoring tool up and down. I did this side, this side I have to do this top and this bottom and I am right handed so it's a little bit of a Stay straight. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a thing for me. If my arm is in the way then. And I don't like to do this, but I will. <laughs> because I don't want to move it all over the place. And there you go. Now we're ready to wrap. Now that it's all nice and scored, like I said, I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, you can. So now it's nice and neat. And you can now fold it over. And you should still be gentle, but because you scored it, you don't have to worry as much because the score lines are the boss. Once you score the paper, that's where the paper's going to go. Move my ruler out of the way. 
all of my tools I like to keep in a um a little mason jar so I don't have this madness. <laughs> but it's kind of hard to keep digging through it because I also have paper piercers, spatulas, hook tools. Um, the getting all the bits out of your embossing folders tool. I don't know, lots of tools are in there. So do these four sides just like this, and then so now I like to take my brayer again. I don't like scoring too tightly. I feel like it's a good way to cre crease your paper too much. Sometimes it just needs something a little more gentle. Like I use the side of my um, bone folder more than the... I use it more like this than like this. Because although the corners being sharp is really nice, you can over sharpen. <laughs> and in doing so, end up with wrinkled or torn paper, and that stinks. So I like to baby everything. It's the last side. Then. Okay, so I do things, I don't know if anybody else does this, but I find when I try to cr cross and miter, they come out ridiculous. So what I do is just cut the squares out. You see this is a square scored there and there. I just remove that. And we'll go to the outside of the score and then to the outside, which you can't see. Move that. I have piles of stuff all around so I can show you stuff. Okay. kind of pull it out. If there's a little bit, I will make sure it stays on there. And this one's here. There's a little fuzzy thing sticking out here. I'm going to snip it. I have to snip it off camera because I can't see it. And then I will usually then Cut an angle so it gives the appearance of true mitered corners. I don't go all the way to the corner. I need to be in frame. So we close that. And this looks very nice. Like a nice mitered corner. I know I'm far away, but I can't get too close or you won't be able to see. Can you see it gives a mitered look? Okay, let's cut out all these squares and then we need more tape to tape this down. I know I'm out of frame. Let's see. Well, we can start to bend this slowly. You don't want to go all the way for anything. If you go too far, you will rip it. <clears throat> so we can start to move it a bit so that I can hold it up, hopefully, 
be close enough for you to see. And then we cut off this guy in a very weird position. You know, I'm always afraid to cut it because I'm afraid <laughs> it'll expose the quarter. I try to kind of pull it out. Eh. And then there'll be a little fuzzy piece in that part I don't mind cutting. You fit good. You are good. Fuzzy piece I will cut off. It's a little teeny bit. It's not even cutting the paper. It's just that fuzz. Now it's gone. And then slightly miter this guy. Let's say I don't like to go too far. Now we have a nice looking mitered sort of edge. So this is how I avoid worrying about my corners. I miter all of my flaps and my pockets and my flips and my stuff but that's to remove bulk from the book, not because I'm really concerned about my corners being perfect or anything. Because they are what they are. I don't want them showing any of the cardboard. also don't want the... Looking to see if there's fuzz. There's just a fuzz of fuzz. And last corner. So I am really on paper rations with this book. The paper pad only comes with, uh, it says 40 sheets, but I'm really surprised, there it is, at how fast 40 sheets goes by, I'm getting a little bit of fuzz, very carefully so as not to expose, and miter this guy which as you can see also doesn't actually go to the exact corner it just goes it's kind of squared at the corner so okay now let's get the tape out again we are going to tape the top of this and the inside of this. Two pieces per thing. thing. I'm going to start with all of the insides because I have to miter the um, tape for the outside. So we'll do all of the inside part. And now I don't use, I've seen people who have far more skill than I do and they use an acrylic block or whatever to cut the tape. I, just, I, I can't do that. This doesn't seem to work out when I try to do it. So I don't. I just use scissors. And I end up holding it there and then I am uh, as I hold it there I don't know, I'm yanking on the tape and it doesn't seem to tear as easily. And then because these intersect, I'm removing this bit of tape so I can put this one on top of it. Bad 
to here. Oops. Don't want that little bit. And because this is straight, I'm going to add the piece here as well, even though I seem to have cut it crooked. How funny is that? Put it on the edge here. And it's straight. And we just do this all the way around. Okay, now all this tape is on, and we went to all that trouble just to peel it right back off again. Give it a good press down. Let's go right here. Press it, press it, press it. So it all sticks really good. makes it easier for us to release the paper backing. The tape backing. I'm going to say a billion times, remove the tape. I'm just warning you, I do it every time. So hopefully you will realize I mean the backing. So first I'm going to put the sides on. I'm going to keep this guy pulled back. the opposite side of my knife and this guy pulled back and now we move these two Press it down nice and tight. Okay, so see, I like to do it flat. I don't want to be too rough because that then causes mass hysteria and pandemonium. Things rip. People get all upset. Or maybe it's just me because I've done it before. Making books for a very, 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 very long time. So anything that can go wrong and will go wrong, it, I, it's gone wrong for me. And I expect, it would be crazy to think it won't, that it's all going to something, many things are going to go wrong during this tutorial. But I always say, if I do it wrong and you see me fix it, then you know what to do. So, it's all good. Push this guy over nicely, like I said. Nice. Okay, now I do this side, that guy off, get this guy off, and 
thickness. You want to try to go from the middle, 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 and push out. Awesome. A little bit of that. And then here, where the bump is in the box, let me show you. Can you see? Now you want to go with the side of your bone folder and show the paper that the bump is supposed to be there. You want it there and you want to train the paper to go over it, but still remain a bump. I'll pull mine up closer for you when I finish. See how I went on either side and with the bump. Now we just do the same thing on the bottom. One and two. Another one of my problems. I'm really not that fast. I, I try to be and I think I am. But then I look at the time and I'm like, yep, not even close. Again, we push this guy in from the middle. Then we push all the way out. If you were using chipboard, you would instead be doing it, um, you'd be pushing into the space that's left in between the um, spine and covers. You'd be denting it in instead of, in our case, kind of rubbing it out. And now, for your action. Brayer. 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 And you. So as you can see, our top is beautiful and smooth. No rips or tears. Very nice, our front, beautiful. So now we have to carefully start to bend our book into a book shape. And then go back and fix your little bumps. Make sure they stay nice. And they're going to be covered again with the um, hinges. The hinge binding system is going to go out into, you don't want to flatten that. You will rip your book. Just gently bend it until you get it to a very nice up and down shape. Gonna slowly move it and bend it. And then I like to leave something like the brayer, a 
little heavy and let it sit for a little bit. And when I come back, we'll be making the binding.